So we have a projectile motion problem. This time, the projectile motion problem is not on level ground. So the object is being thrown off um, at a height higher than what it lands. In fact, the picture <clears throat> looks like this. And you have an object. going to keep going down and over here would be the building and so the building is 30 meters tall now things we know from this picture <clears throat> we're told about the initial launch you know that it is being launched upward and the angle there is 20 degrees. That's going to allow us to figure out the vertical and horizontal components of initial velocity. We also, so actually let's do that first. I know that v naught x will be, let's see, the initial overall velocity was 15. So v naught x will be 15 cosine 20 degrees, which is 14 meters per second. And v naught y. will be 15 meters per second times sine of 20 degrees, which is 5.1. Other things that we know. <clears throat> we know the acceleration of this object vertically it's negative 10 meters per second squared horizontally it is zero the object doesn't speed up left or right only up and down and the last thing we know and this one I think is challenging to understand is to figure out what exactly is the displacement of this object the, vertical, the horizontal displacement, I think, is pretty straightforward. We start over here. We end up over here. So this represents our horizontal displacement, which I'm going to call delta x. Some of you have been calling it dx. That works. The vertical displacement's a little harder to understand. The tendency is to want to include the entire up, then back down for displacement vertically. But that's not the case, because it turns out this up part is undone by this down part. So in reality, let's erase all that. In reality, <clears throat> the vertical displacement is just this distance, 30 meters. But, I'm actually going to write this a little differently. I want to be careful here because I need to include a negative sign. And that negative sign is consistent with the fact that acceleration is also negative in the y direction. Down is negative. So now that I know all this information, I can start to do the calculations. Um, turns out I've actually already solved question A, the initial vertical and horizontal components of velocity right here. We can go ahead and box those. The 
let's move on over to B. So, question B. Determine the time it takes to reach the peak of the flight. To get to the peak of the flight, I'm going to look at the y direction. And the reason I want to do this is I happen to know some interesting information that at the very top of the flight, the peak it's really messy. Let me try that again, guys. In the y direction is zero. So I'm actually going to let this be my v final y for the trip up. So at the peak, the ball is not moving for an instant vertically. It does keep moving horizontally the entire time at a constant 14 meters per second. But now that I know this information, that v final y is 0 for the trip up, v initial y we found in part a is 5.1. <clears throat> and as always the case, a y is negative 10 meters per second squared. I can find the time. I'm going to use A, V final Y, V initial Y, divided by time. <clears throat> Negative 10 meters per second squared. 0 minus 5.1 meters per second. Divided by time. And when I solve for time, I'm going to get 0.51 seconds. So that's the answer to be.